Who, who, who um, do you mean? Who are you referring to? I've written down on my notes here that there was an annoying other woman. Does that ring any bells with you? <laughs> oh, she was very annoying. Yes. Yes. <laughs> So, we're talking about Red Rooms, which is coming out in cinemas on the 6th of September. It's a dark psychological thriller written and directed by Pascal Plante, who did Nadia and Butterfly, and it stars Juliet Garieppi and Laurie Babin. I hope I've got the pronunciations right. Um, this is a film that I saw, well, I think it was a year ago, because it was at the London Film Festival. Could possibly have been two years ago. I think it was last year, though. Um, but it has done loads of other festivals as well, including Fantasia, Busan International Film Festival and of course like I mentioned LFF as well so it's a high profile case of serial killer Ludovic Chevalier and he's just gone on trial Kellyanne who is our protagonist is obsessed with this guy Chris is here we are boys on film don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already we've got loads of other film reviews coming very soon so we love a psych- psychological thriller don't we Chris we do. I mean, again, you could be talking about our joint DJ sets at the RBT. There, but, <laughs> um, yeah, no, this is this is a really well paced film, in my view. You know, it's it's we spoke about this, and it it's it's seldom that a a thriller of this nature can really keep you with it for its entire duration. But I've got to say that from the opening shots to literally the last five minutes. I was properly gripped by this film, like properly, I need to know what's going on. I still don't understand all these facts that are being presented to me and I've got to work this out. And, you know, it just keeps you going for the whole duration, which I think is quite a feat in today's, you know, in the environment we're in and people like these tiny little attention spans. You know, I think it's quite something. It really keeps you going. I completely agree. And actually that thing that you you pointed that out about being gripped that was one of my first notes um Mm -hmm. to to be you know because i wanted to remember that when doing this review because like i say it was a year ago when i saw it first time and um i just remember sitting in that screening room it's quite a big screening room and just compelled throughout the whole Mm -hmm. two hours Mm -hmm. and it doesn't let up either and it doesn't reveal much throughout the whole of the running time and then when you get that payoff at the end and boy is there a payoff it's so worth waiting for that you just think this is so worth it it's worth being put through that two hours of intrigue and suspense and i think it's a real skill in in filmmaking to do that loads of films set out to keep you intrigued and to keep you gripped and to keep your attention all that way they almost all the little things the advertising stuff that we read before we watch any film says those kind of things so I kind of read that and I was like, oh, it's another one. You know, they're just going to keep me intrigued for the next two hours. But you are. You are just with it. It really, really goes. I mean, a part of it for me is that it's just beautifully shot. I mean, it's just, it's one of those films that's like a collection of really elegant, beautiful stills just stitched together into a film. But it's got these, I don't know if you've noticed this, but every time you're in the courtroom, which which fills up a fair amount of the film, it's comprised of a whole bunch of very slow, very long, single panning shots. And they really work because what you're doing is you're sort of hovering around the room, you know, as this kind of unseen presence, as the camera would be an unseen presence. And you're just sort of taking it all in and you're seeing it. And it, but it moves at this pace, which is very sort of human and very kind of measured. And it just feels like you're there. It just feels like you're in the room, just kind of floating around, kind of like, and things kind of pan around and then suddenly someone will kind of shot in the, in the distance really really effective and i think for me that was a really skillful sort of piece of cinematography to kind of do that yeah and i think if you're not a fan of courtroom dramas that cinematography does make it a lot more interesting as well so don't be put off by the fact that it's a courtroom thriller because there is a lot of other stuff going on as well as those scenes but because those scenes so look so dynamic it doesn't matter anyway. It's not, you don't, I was never switched off from that fact. But I think one of the clever things about this film is what makes it chilling is um, that they're talking about the deaths of these women. Those deaths are spoken about and you see the, the pictures and stuff. I mean, some of the details are spoken about, but they're not really shown on screen. So it's not gratuitously done, but it's effectively done because... The sound design, the audio, you know, the audio that you hear is 
terrifying and really haunting as well. And I think that's what makes it really powerful. So I think it's a really clever use of, of subjects mm. instead of actually just doing the obvious thing and just showing all the gory detail. They don't do that. They kind of, but they build up the tension, don't they? Absolutely. And it's, the, the experience of watching it is a bit like being in a situation where we had a conversation sitting on the sofa during the film about, well, if you were called to a jury and you had to sit and do this stuff, could you really sit there and and see this stuff? And actually, you're protected from that as a viewer of this film. You're distinctly a viewer of the film rather than a participant. You know, that's that's very obvious. But as you say, so many of these things are happening sort of off camera or at least off, um, you know, you, you can't see what's happening. And it really makes you think, oh, my word, you know, I can kind of piece some pieces together there from what I can hear and what people are talking about, whatever. Could I sit there and watch that as a jury member, you know, and how horrific would that be? I mean, there are, there's a great little sequence where they reveal some evidence and they clear the courtroom to the, the very essential people that need to be there. And um, I think somebody collapses or something, an ambulance arrives, an ambulance crew arrives because somebody, you know, in the room kind of collapses. And you, that really underlines the horror. That's really horrific to realise that somebody faints as a consequence of seeing it. You don't have to have seen it as the viewer yeah. of the film. But you just you get a real sense of that because you're like, oh my word, somebody has like you know passed out. It's yeah, totally. It's like the, the the old Hitchcock method, isn't it? Don't show too yeah. much because it's what's in your head that makes it more terrifying. And of course, Absolutely. you're getting all these little tidbits. You're getting all the, the you know this the sound effects and the audio and the descriptions that are building an image in your head, which actually is a lot more disturbing than what you're seeing on screen a lot of the time. So I think it's really clever that they do that. Also, it made me think, why is this protagonist so obsessed with the crime and the person that they're talking about that's mm. meant to have committed the crime? And mm -hmm. we are constantly asking that question throughout, which goes, you know, goes back to what we said earlier. That payoff is fantastic because it does explain all that. And it's yep. so gripping and so, I don't know, that big build-up at the end, It's it it really does make you kind of want to air punch in a way because it's it's yep. so, so dramatic, isn't it? It's a proper resolution. And what's so good about it, is it, 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 there's no dramatic sort of curve leading towards that. What's happening is that you're just on this kind of constant level of wondering and then suddenly you get that explanation at the end, you know, and it's suddenly, as you say, it pays off. It makes sense. You're like, oh, OK, yeah, get it. So why is it, so is it a perfect film is my question to you, Philip. Is this the most perfect film? Or is well, it come on to that. Film? I just want to quickly say about the performances because the performances are fantastic. And also the guy who plays Ludovic, he plays him so, so brilliantly, but it's down to his looks a lot of the time as well, his expressions, because he's got this kind of very sad expression, uh, almost like a stretched face, isn't it? It's kind of doe eyes as he's sitting there. And you kind of, not, you don't sympathise with him, but you are questioning what's going on. And you have I think, no idea. Though. No, you, exactly. You know, most of the film, you're sitting there looking at this man who's utterly blank, you know, not giving anything away. He, he looks like a very grey, ordinary type person. There's nothing extraordinary about him. And you know how it is. You watch these dramas and, you, and you're always sitting there thinking, well, did they do it? Did they not do it? There's just nothing given away. You know, there is no clue at all in his behaviour, his appearance, what he says, how he acts. Nothing at all. So is it a perfect film? Because we're going to come on to the star rating. But you need to mention a couple of things that you thought didn't work I, I did say earlier it was um a two hour running time which i think is one of the downsides because it does lag slightly very slightly i think it's almost a perfect film though to be honest some of the characterizations uh, of some of the other characters i think the main ones are all really good but some of the other characterizations are a bit bonkers um and and not not as tight as they could be who, who, um, who do you mean who are you referring I to written down on my notes here that there was an annoying other woman. Does that ring any bells with you? <laughs> oh, she was very annoying, yes. Very annoying. Um, and you kind of wonder what she's there for as a character, to be honest. I kind of wondered why we needed her. There are occasions where you just want you just want a little bit more breadcrumb trail throw down for you. You know, you want, I think you're absolutely right. The payoff pays off. It's, it's, it's brilliant. But it's, it, it's, really it really does. Is. Yeah. You kept going, and then you're smacked in the face with it. And I think... A couple more. Clues. I mean, maybe if we both watched it again, maybe we'd get some of those clues a bit more. The second time, maybe they are there. They're just too deeply buried. I don't know. Um, but you do. We're all used to as audiences 
getting those little kind of clues all the way through. I think here it doesn't matter because I, honestly, I do think you're, you are kept captivated for the whole duration. But I think for people who may not be, may be slightly more cynical and may not be able to stick with it, you need to give them a bit more, you know, to kind of keep them engaged, probably. Okay, fair enough. That's a fair point. So, star rating then? I'm saying four, because, you know, it wasn't the most perfect film. It isn't perfect, but it is really, really good. You know, I I, I really want to do a half point. You won't let me. I know you won't. So, it's just going to be four. (laughs) Yeah, I I don't have many problems with the film at all, because I think it ticks so many boxes. But I think if there was one thing that would remove that star, because I think it is almost perfect, would be the running time. Just... Maybe five or ten minutes. I mean, that's so picky, though, and it's almost ridiculous mm. to mention that as as a problem because it's not really a major problem. But I don't know what I'd chop out, to be honest. I mean, I can't remember there being bits where I was like, oh, what's this for? You know, I, there was nothing that I'd trip out. I, mean, I think, you know, you could pr- you're probably right. You could probably prune, like, 15 seconds off a of half a dozen scenes and manage to get three minutes off it. I think where she's, but... in, a, where she's in her apartment, some of that is a bit... Uh, does outstay its welcome a little bit it's just oh why yeah why are we here for so yeah. long but oh i just remember the annoying woman woman yes i just remembered who that is and and you know yeah wh- why she required you know i suppose why she's required you know she's similarly got a very deep interest in the protagonist hasn't she and what is the point uh, of her what, what, well what, what's, I've, just what's her worth? My, <laughs> I've just worked all this out in my little brain as we've been talking i think that she She's obsessed in the story from the um, from the perpetrator of the accused's point of view. The main character is, is obsessed um, because of the victims, because of the family around the victims. She's obsessed with different aspects of them. So they're kind of two halves of a similar Easter egg, aren't they? Those two. Yeah. You know, they're kind of like one. They're both. They're all. They're both obsessed, but they're obsessed with different aspects of the case. And I suppose you need her to be the fluffy, annoying sort of half of that you know thing so that the other one can be a bit more serious and and pay off i suppose but i do wonder if you could shoot that whole film or have that whole film with it just out without her being in it (laughs) to be honest i just wonder if it'll still work maybe maybe it wouldn't yeah true i think that's important though because i think if something is in there just for the sake of it or you know it's it's a filler isn't it and that doesn't necessarily need to be there but it's not much i think there was a purpose for her but i'm not i'm just not sure that purpose needed to be fulfilled, actually, because I think you're getting enough of it from the from the main character and what was going on with relationships. But um, yeah, no, I've, I've really, really enjoyed it. it. Properly, I did not fall asleep once. I, you know, I kept with it for two hours and, uh, you know, it was, we both sat there at the end of it and went, okay, that was yeah. a really good film. Yeah. yeah, it was definitely the highlight for me at the London Film Festival last year. It's Red Rooms and it comes out in cinemas here in the UK, finally! after distribution uh, a year later it's crazy to think it's taken a year but yeah it's out on the 6th of September let us know if you're going to see it drop a comment down below tell us what you thought and don't forget to like and subscribe what do people need to do Chris? they need to like and subscribe there you go I'm going to put that on a promo (laughs) (laughs) it was that dynamic wasn't it? (laughs)